G'day. A long time ago, a friend of mine brought one of these in. It's a riser block. It's used on a tool and cutter grinder. He had one and needed two. And uh, it's been sitting here for a while because I've been trying to think how best to do it. And over the last uh, week or so, I had a, a series of thoughts which have led me to be able to, uh, to make one. So uh, this is a, a little bit about that. Um, the machining itself is pretty straightforward, but it's the it's the sort of the setup and the the, the sequence I think that's going to be the, uh, the the key thing for this one. This is the part I want to duplicate. It's a riser block for a uh, Hercus tool and cutter grinder, I believe. Now, this bit and this bit are easy because that's just a straight distance. However, the distance between the you know a point on this V and the point of this V is the same distance, and these parts have got to be the same uh, height. So I'm going to have to make up a jig to, to hold that while I machine. What I'm also going to do have, have to do is some, some careful measurement and uh, I'll get to that uh, in a little while. The first thing I've done here is I've, I've taken my block down to uh, largest dimensions. So I've ignored the draft and I just said what's the largest dimension, done that. I'm now going to chain drill out that middle piece. Now it's probably, in reality, it's probably too small to, to be useful. But if I just came in with, a, with an annular cutter and popped out, I've still got some corners to, to get rid of. And so I'm going to use a 9.5 uh, drill. I'll do pilot drills first, but then I'll put a 9.5 in there. And hopefully that'll get me to a point where I can just sort of uh, knock that out, cut that out reasonably easily. The reason for a 9.5 is that the radii inside there are 9.5. Uh, the part is symmetrical that way. Sorry, is that symmetrical that way? But this way, uh, it's not. So that thickness is different to that thickness. So I've marked flat and V. At this stage, I've still got the choice. I can I can put the 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 convex, I guess, V on this side, or I can flip it over and put on that side. But I've chain drilled out the the center section here, and then I had to cut through some of the remaining webs with the uh, the hacksaw, um, mainly there and there. But there are a couple there that was just a little bit offline so it didn't quite join up. A uh, couple of things that uh, worth, worth thinking about. One is that I did a pilot hole and that helps keep the, the large diameter which is meant to join up uh, on track. If you just try going in with a large one it could actually skip out into the next uh, hole. Uh, I'm sure there are people out there who are more skilled at doing this than I am and, and can get away with it but, uh, but I can't. Typically around about five times drill diameter is about as deep as you can go without having to worry too much about getting chips out. And so what I had to do here was I went down around about halfway with my five millimeter drill. Um, and then I, I went down as deep as I could with the, the nine and a half and then came back with the five and a half, uh, the, the five to uh, continue the hole through so I could then go right through. Uh, and that relieving that hole that way enabled the chips to, to sort of flick out and not bind up on the drill quite so much. I've just done a pass through here with a with the the cutter that I put a radius on in my my sharpening video, and as you can see there, it's it's left that nice little fillet in there. So the reason I like doing it this way is just that if you, if I came in with a ball nose cutter, I've got to get the flat cutter, flat ended cutter that I use, to precisely line up with that to, you know be tangent to that radius. Whereas here it's built in and I can actually do passes back and forth with this and okay I lose a little bit on uh, the outers there but it's you know so I, I can't necessarily traverse as much but I, I get a nice continuous finish. The reason I'm doing that is that I've got to come in with a tapered cutter and run around this inside pocket. Now that's a little high as it is, so the, the, the lower I can get that, the better off I am for putting this uh, pocket in and, get, and getting that right. So that's basically the reason I'm, I'm you know, putting this feature in now. Once I've got that all sorted, I can then start thinking about uh, these Vs and, and, and the flats, the corresponding flats and how to do that. I'm at a halfway-ish spot, I guess, at the moment. So far, I've taken the um, my my block down to size. I've put in these 
um, what would you call them, reliefs, I guess. And I've now cleaned up the inside of that and put a one degree taper on it. And that actually gets me very close to what you'd get if you had a, if you got a, this cast. You'd, you'd, the pattern would produce something like this. Um, possibly a little bit taller on some of these surfaces just to give a bit more of a machining allowance, but it's, it's pretty much what you'd get. Now, the next thing I'm going to tackle, I think, is I'm going to try and put these grooves in. They're not critical. All they are is a, is a, is a clearance groove, um, but I'm going to put them in just so that they're, they're in. Once, once they're done, I can then start thinking about putting in the, that V and that V. What I'm going to do to put this V in is I've got a, a, a dummy bit of tooling and, and I'm going to bolt that to the, the machine table, mill the V out and then locate this V in that so I can then say I know where that V is, I know where this V is. Because if you think about what this is, those two surfaces just have to be parallel. These two V's have to be the same that way as well as having the same uh, height difference as, as these two, otherwise it's not going to, it's not going to work. This took me a while to get my head around and, and so I thought, let's show you what we've got. That top V, if I put a 12 millimeter diameter uh, rod in there and I measure it to there, 12.02, that thickness between the two flats is 38.17. And so, because this is a, it's, it's, it's basically popping everything up, that amount, the, dis the distance between the center of that, um, rod and a rod inside here would be 38.17. What I'm going to do is I've got a couple of bits of square bar which I just welded onto a, a couple of bits of strip and that's just to hold them there. What I'm going to do is mill a V in here, have that at the right height relative to that V which from this little sum here, if it's 17 wide, da 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 da, that's it's 10.98 from the top of that to there. So what I'm going to do is mill that down to size, bring this down, maybe leave it a little bit proud so I can measure, put my rod in here and measure that from there to there and make sure that's the right height. And then I'll miller that that shape onto the um, the blank I've got. Have that sitting in there. Clamp it down, and then by a simple Z uh, move, I should be able to put that top V in. Once I've got that in, uh, I can then put that that flat there on because that's that's a simple one. Once I know where that, I can put that rod in there. Measure from there down machine off, everything's wonderful. So the key thing at the moment is getting the relationship between this V and that flat and getting that onto here. So that this is basically an exact copy of this bit. Here's the jig. I've machined this uh, strip out with a 45 degree angle on the mill head. Uh, I don't like doing that because it means I've got to re-tram it, but you know, it's in a good cause. So I've got a, a 45 degree groove there. I've got that one there. Uh, it's, it's actually quite strange because the measurement I took was with a 12 mil dowel and it's from there to there is 12 millimeters. So if I measure that like that and then I measure that like that and they're the same, then those two are actually where they need to be. So I've done that and that's all good. 
here's the one I, I have and that just sort of sits in there quite nicely. So what I need to do now is get my blank, put the 45s on, on there, then I can flip that over, provided my, the X is in the same spot, the groove I've cut there is the, is, the, is in the same location as the groove I cut here. Bit of a stuff up on my part here. I originally had this around the, the other way. I cut that uh, angle on there. I thought, you beauty, we're, we're good. Went to move over and the clamps were in the way. So I've had to turn these clamps around uh, and very, very carefully tram this, uh, this surface back in. I may have to give that a touch of, the, of, of scraper if it's not uh, quite right, but it uh, should be all right. So I should be able to come in now and do, well, this one and also this um, face here. Then I can flip it over and put it onto my, my jig here, hold it down and cut the groove in the middle. So far so good. Uh, fits, fits. So all I need to do now is put this in my jig, run that slot through there. And then um, I think as a last thing, put the, put the head back upright again, tram it up, and then, then just take this down to size. Um, I'd like to suggest that I left this long for a good reason, but uh, I've, I probably could have trimmed it earlier, although it has come in handy for being able to clamp things. I've probably mentioned this before in one of my uh, tips videos, but for those of you who haven't seen those, uh, for tramming the mill, I've got a setup like this. This is actually, these are actually starrett parts, and that's a starrett indicator. But the 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 key thing is that this is a a uh, what do you call it? A, a, a back panel indicator, a um, back plunger indicator. So I can swing that round and I can see the dial at all stages. All right. So rather than having to muck around with mirrors or I've seen those devices with um, two gauges side by side, uh, this this makes it very easy. Um, Starrett make uh, black back plunger indicators. Mitotoyo make them. Uh, I think Compaq make them. So there are a number out there. But uh, if you're looking for an easy way to, to tram your mill, then I, I would recommend a uh, a back plunger indicator. As one of the final operations to give this a, that that casting look, I'm going to put a, a slight draft angle on the the sides here just to just to make it look like it has been cast. I could put that up on an angle plate, a uh, sign plate, something like that. It only needs one degree. So what I'm going to do instead is I've, I've got a um, angle plate. I think they're called angle plates. And what I'm going to do is get a bit of shim and lift the front up until I get a one degree angle on that. Then I can strap that to the, uh, the, the angle plate machine away and um, that'll be that. It, it doesn't have to be precise so I'm not too fussed whether it's going to be 1 or 1.2 or 1.1 or 0 0.9 whatever. Uh, I just want to get a little bit of a, a draft look to it. Ready to cut here so I've got this jacked up on a, on a shim and that's kicked back about a degree. I've put some packers under here just to, to hold things up and I've got my uh, cutter set up. I've got some text are down here for two reasons. One is that it shows me when I'm just on the edge there, uh, which I has, but I've also got it there to remind me which way around to put this thing. You don't want a casting with draft in one direction on three sides and then in a different direction on the fourth side. So uh, that's just a, a reminder for me. So I'm just going to skim those off uh, all four sides. Here's my final uh, no pour casting compared to the original. I've gone long and, and rounded some edges here just because um, you know natural casting edges don't have sharp corners on them, at least not sharp sharp corners. Uh, the, the machine surfaces I've left sharp because that's what they'd, they'd look like but that'll take a coat of paint and uh, chances are that won't look very much different to, um, to this one. Perhaps a little bit neater but um, 
you know, nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary there. But it also confirms that uh, without a, um, you know, some simple tooling sometimes, jobs can be a lot more difficult than they were because this one's been sitting around for a while until I worked out, you know, how to, how to do it. So there we go. So thanks for watching and um, please uh, share and uh, like and all that sort of stuff.